Tonight, our Class A Legion baseball teams take center stage as we continue to dive into tournament season for the summer. The East Division teams meeting at Jack Williams Stadium to continue the quarterfinals of their championship tourney. Two more games with a trip to state qualifying games on the line. The evening shift begins with Wapton Post 20, the two seed battling the seven seeded Fargo Jets. Bottom of the first two, run first two runners reach for Wapton, but that's when Quinn Miller shows off the glove at third, tags the bag for one and a dart to first for two. We got a double play, but Wapton wanted the lead and they get it later in the inning. Jaden King sends a blooper to center, drops in for a knock. Skyler Blado hustles home to put post 20 up one nothing on the RBI single. Wapton dropped five runs on the Jets in the second inning, capped off by a Cooper Klosterman two run single that just gets past the shortstop. Post 20 takes a six nothing lead at the time and they're going to hold that the rest of the way. Wapton moving on with a shutout victory. The nightcap at the Jack features the five-seeded Kindred Vikings and the four-seeded Fargo Post 2 Bombers. Picking up in the second, Kindred at the plate seeking the lead. Stanley Belaski lines a ball the other way to right. Kylan Swenson has the wheels turning on his way home. The Vikings have the one nothing lead on Belaski's RBI double. Kindred takes a 2 nothing lead to the bottom of the second. Bombers looking to respond on the safety squeeze. But Jack McDonald gets it to Bryce Whipple for the out at home. Vikings maintain their advantage. Kindred takes that big play and turns it into another run. A wild pitch in the third scores Mason Almaris for a 3 0 lead. Almaris, I should say. Bombers had a tough time scoring early, but the defense was on point. Ball popped up into foul territory. Kellen Doherty. Looking for it, makes the dive for a tough catch. There it is. Kindred in control, though, reaching the semis with a 4-0 victory of their own. Here's a look at the main bracket for the East Division right now. Wapton and West Fargo said to meet in the first semifinal tomorrow. Meanwhile, on the other side of the bracket, it's the Valley City Royals pulling off the biggest upset of this tournament so far. The ninth-seeded squad defeating the top seed Devils Lake earlier this afternoon. The Fargo Moorhead Redhawks opening up the second half of their season in Gary, Indiana, their series opener against the Railcats. Cats with a runner on and Francisco Del Valle sends a deep shot into right field. Marcus Chu attempting what would have been the craziest catch of all time, but it's over the wall. Two run blast give the Railcats a two nothing lead. That's just the start of a big fourth frame for Gary South Shore. Now with runners on the corners, Howard Rodriguez gets just enough of it, taps it through the infield, gathered and thrown to first, but they can't secure the catch. Railcats building a three nothing nothing lead. Redhawks looking to escape this fourth frame now, but Gio Diaz has other plans. Gets this one to the gap in left field. This is interesting. He does a bat flip for a bloop single. Never seen that before. One runner scores while the other heads for third. Good news, Redhawks fans. CJ Valdez gets him at the bag. The run will count, but the Redhawks manage to stop the bleeding. Still facing a 4-0 deficit, though. Gary's going to go on to take this series opener. These two teams will meet again in Indiana tomorrow. Again, it's right after the All-Star break. You don't want to make too many assumptions off the first game after the All-Star break, but not how the Red Hawks wanted to start the back half. No. Plenty, plenty of time to get back into it. Plenty of time to recover. <laughs> Got a long, long season. Mm -hmm. Long <laughs> stretch of hot weather it's been and more to come. First alert weather day tomorrow. Russ is in with details again after the break. Closed captioning is a public